So I have to say something right off the bat. Um, Mark, I so appreciate your message this morning, the words you shared. I know that wasn't necessarily easy for you. And I just appreciate your rawness. Uh, Scott Gray and I go way, way back. And I love me some Scott Gray. He's a very important catalyst in my life. But Van City is very important in my career and my success. And I just want to honor back most definitely Van City, and I'm thrilled to be here. People need to understand, we broke the rules for me to be here. So it's typically, if you have spoken at a Creative Mornings, which I have in Portland, you're not supposed to speak in another city. And they had to, Mark and his team, got permission from Global Creative Mornings and the city of Portland, Oregon, where I reside, to allow me to do this moment. Now, mind you, when they first came to me and said, oh, the topic's insecure, I'm like, dude, I ain't got no insecurity in me. I'm good. And they said, no, you could be the antidote to insecurity and the feeling of insecure. Well, fast forward and look at all the things that unfolded. A virus, violence, and vocation are under duress. And I've had to deal with all these things. So my insecurity has ratcheted up quite a bit. So I'm gonna share with you some slides and my remarks and some insights around this. You know, I ask everyone to think about your own insecurities, but most importantly, I love what Mark said, courage is the way that you absolutely overcome them. Insecure. Why I'm feeling insecure. The virus, my gosh crazy what happened nearly two months ago. I got to tell you that I was actually in Atlanta. That was my very last event on the road. And it was the day that the president visited the CDC. The highways were blocked off. We were seeing this, you know, caravan of cars coming through downtown Atlanta. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, it should be fine. That following Monday, everything went upside down. One of the things that's been most troubling about it is because of my age, I have to be even more aware of what's going on with the virus. I tell everyone that I'm, an, I'm probably the youngest old head you'll ever meet, right? And so I'm in my 60s. And one of the things that I have to be really mindful of is my exposure, coming back into the house, all these things. But everything got shut down. WFH became the norm, work from home. One of the things that I didn't realize was that it was really going to affect a lot of business and opportunities for individuals, but the death toll, my gosh, in the United States, over 100,000 people have died from this virus. It's outrageous. And so the more that we start to understand the importance of this, we then enter into violence. Are you kidding me? All of the social unrest, the upheaval, 111 cities around the world are going through turmoil right now, civil unrest. Black Lives Matter, let me tell you something. I have paid attention to this my entire life. I'm a child of the 60s. I have watched all this going on. The more that I start to understand the importance of what we're doing and why this is happening, I love what Martin Luther King said, a riot is the language of the unheard. That's why this is happening. It's a great saying, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm not surprised by the violence. I'm not surprised by the civil unrest. I'm not surprised by the protests. We need to pay attention to our intention. My vocation is under duress. Over 40,000 people are, are out of work in the United States alone. I'm sorry, 40 million people. Let's get that right. 40 million people are out of business out of work, trying to collect unemployment. Many of those people have never had to do unemployment. I'm one of them. It's been challenging. It's been confusing. All of these factors create this disturbing scenario. Over 100,000 people have passed away. 111 cities are involved in civil unrest and protests and riots. 40 million people are out of work. 
course I would feel insecure. But what should we do? We have choices. We could be a victim. It's very easy, right? Or we could be a victor. The choice. If I looked at insecure as a foe, which I do, I'm competing against it. I'm fighting against it. I have to have the right mindset and attitude to show up every single day. The wolf you feed, a parable. One evening, a Cherokee elder told his grandson about a battle that goes on inside people. He said, my son, the battle is between two wolves inside us all. One is evil. It is anger, envy, jealousy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather, which wolf wins? The Cherokee elder simply replied, the one you feed. So my history, abandonment, addiction, upheaval, uncertainty, dysfunction, and disappointment. I'm the product of two addict parents, two parents who abandoned their three boys. My grandparents rescued us and had us live with them in a suburb of Philadelphia. It's easy for me to feel insecure. I had low self-esteem as a child because I had dealt with a lot, suffering and circumstances and upheaval. Now, one of the things that I realized really quickly when I would overhear the conversations from the social workers when they were talking to my grandparents about me and my two brothers is that they had already written us off. They basically told my grandparents, look what they come from. Don't expect much. Do the best you can. I got an attitude early on in my life. I'll show you. I'll show you. And so I decided that I wasn't going to be a victim very early, but I still struggled with insecurity and low self-esteem. Now we look at the present and all those feelings. My six-year-old self is right by my side as all these things are unfolding, the virus, the violence, the vocational challenges, and I'm wondering, how am I going to compete with this? How am I going to fight against this? How am I not going to succumb to this feeling of insecurity? So I started to think about it. I decided that I'm not going to allow that bad wolf the one that is all about the things that really cloud your mindset and your attitude and the way you show up to win. I decided that I'm going to choose what I chose from my childhood and continue to do that. I'm gonna be a victor over victim. I'm not gonna be a victim. That's the easy route. I'm gonna be a victor. And the more that I realized the importance of that, I started putting together all of these things that came into play that allowed me to show up this way at this point in my life, even with all the upheaval and uncertainty that we're dealing with right now. Energy. I'm going to bring some heat every single day. I'm going to show up. I'm going to make sure that I'm present and I'm available and I'm really paying attention. My grandfather would say, be where your feet are. Be present. Show up. Be in the moment. That energy has served me well. I'm going to compete. Look, bring it on. Let's go. Let's go. Because I'm going to compete every single day because I've had to compete for what I needed, what I hoped for, and what I wanted in my life. Six years old, dealing with all that difficult, no one would have ever said, oh, well, of course you're a victim. Of course you're dealing with some difficult. Look what you come from. I decided to raise my game. And I realized that raising my game, showing up with energy, allowed me to do something really important. But the X factor for me, the catalyst, if you will, was belonging. See, belonging, belonging to a group, a tribe, finding people who would lift me up, would pour into me hopes and dreams and aspirations, but also would hold me accountable for my hopes, my dreams, my aspirations. I found my community. I found my belonging. I found these individuals. And the most important group that I found actually happened to be at that address, 754 Haverford Road. That's a key to the Lane's house. 
That's me in my youth. And that's a picture of me and Miss Lane. Miss Lane, I affectionately call my CEO, my chief encouragement officer of my dreams. But Miss Lane would always follow up with this. She would always say, I'm going to check with you. I'm going to check to see what you're doing with that idea. Don't talk about it, be about it. There's lots of talkers and very few doers. Which one are you? I started to realize that action was the secret ingredient to turning idea, a dream, a hope into reality. And these are the individuals from my life in my childhood. I always look at these hats and I see this mosaic of men that I represent. I'm a piece of all the men from my life. My mom is also pictured in that in the black and white picture there. But the playground, that ball represents Preston Playground. All those hats represent all the men who poured into me because I didn't have a dad. They were drug dealers and users, war veterans and workers. They were the parents of my friends and even my peers. One of the things that I started to realize, and I love that Mark brought up that word courage, I discovered that I needed courage at 10 years old because my mama, my grandmother, suddenly and unexpectedly passed away. I discovered Daredevil when I was 10 years old, and I loved his tagline, the man without fear. I realized that courage is going to be a really important piece for me to raise my game and to not feel insecure and to fight the good fight. Play was really important for me. I loved playing. I loved sports, but not for trophies, medals, or first place, always for belonging. But I had a lot of success playing sports, and I loved being on teams. And so here's a reflection of all my efforts around sports as a child. And yes, I had the success, and it's reflected in these little medals and everything. But most importantly, any time I look at that picture, I think about my teammates. I think about my coaches. I think about the individuals who lifted me up and poured into me confidence. See, confidence was really important for me to find a way to rise above my insecurity. And the more that I realized that I could express myself physically, it gave me self-confidence to do other things in the classroom, in the community. Positivity. Listen, you gotta bring a bit of that every single day. I truly believe that that attitude, that mindset can overcome just about anything. Not that Pollyanna, everything's going to be okay, but positivity with strategy behind it, right? Always being very strategic in the way that you're bringing yourself. You know what? Sometimes you can be angry and that can actually create a catalytic response so that you can find a solution. So positivity is not always about the Pollyanna. It can also be about holding on to some of these other responses to really difficult situations that will allow you to have a positive outcome. Confidence. I'll mention again that when I was six, I had low self-esteem. I had really big insecurities. I thought that I would be found out that I didn't have a traditional family. And over time, what ended up happening was I started to gain more confidence as I started to realize that people recognized me for my gifts and my talents, not for my address. See, where we lived, that was actually where they dictated what your career, your life would be. Right? They looked at your address or zip code, and they would actually put you in a specific school track. Growing up in the 60s, that's how they evaluated your talent. I was fortunate to have people who poured into me and said, you're more than that. Raise your game. Find a way. Bring that heat, Kevin. And I started to understand the importance of confidence. That allowed me to turn ideas into reality. And because of all those factors, all those individuals from the community, from Miss Lane, from the teams, from positivity, from finding a way to rise above my suffering and circumstances, I've had a chance to turn ideas into reality. Because of a ball, books, my love of reading and learning, I got a bachelor's degree in speech communication and sports medicine. I got a master's degree in health education. I spent 10 years in the Air Force as a language translator. I speak five languages, Serbian, Croatian, Russian, German, and Czech. I found a way to turn my ideas into reality. I worked at the high school level, the collegiate level, and then I was only the third African-American head athletic trainer in the history of the NBA for my hometown team, the Philadelphia 76ers. Now imagine, I'll say this once again, I'm that six-year-old boy who was abandoned, who was told that nothing good was going to come of me, who has battled insecurity my entire life. It is a daily fight because my six-year-old self is with me every single day. So this reflects all the success that I've had, but I also know one really specific thing. We're dealing with something right now. What are we going to do right now in this moment? Every single one of us is dealing with collective loss. 
Everyone is suffering in some way, shape, or form, whether it's the virus or the violence or your vocation. So what now? I love the fact that I believe we're in this really beautiful place called the in-between. The in-between. There's a word for this magical space between no longer and not yet. It's called liminality. It's an awkward, scary, and unpredictable place to be. Think about it a little differently and it will become transformative, exciting, and full of opportunity. We are absolutely in liminality. No longer and not yet. So what will you do with this moment? It's an opportunity has been presented to every single one of us. Yes, insecurity is real. We're all feeling insecure. There is no doubt. But which wolf will you choose? The good, the evil, which one? The choice is yours. Every single day you have to repeat and decide which wolf you're choosing. You could surrender or you can compete. That's your choice, isn't it? Right? A victim or a fighter. I love this one little simple notion. Courage is shown in acts, not in words. It is not bluffing, arrogance, or madness. The courageous man or woman is the one who dares to do what he or she finds is right and bears the consequences of his or her acts, whether they be political, social, or individual. Are you ready to compete? to raise your game, or are you going to surrender to your circumstances, right, and lose the battle? Pessimist versus optimist. We have a choice every single day around an optimistic attitude or pessimist. Here's a simple truth from Winston Churchill. A pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity. An optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. If you bring that optimistic attitude and you show up every single day, I just ask you to keep going. Keep going, keep showing up. Keep fighting the good fight. I know this to be true, that this community of Creative Mornings globally, you creatives have the unlock. You're innovative, you're problem solvers. You build community, so rally around the things that you are finding that are making you insecure and find others and fight the good fight and repeat and repeat and repeat. Guess what? All these hashtags and slogans and rallies and all these businesses that are putting out all these ads and these you know, different you know, slogans and all these things around, we care, Black Lives Matter, all that. I'm gonna see where you're at in a month. I'm gonna see where you're at in a quarter. Don't talk about it, be about it. There's lots of talkers and very few doers. Which one are you? Keep going. Resilience. Now this I know to be true about resilience. It is not the bounce back. That's not the way I look at resilience. I look at it as sustained determination. Sustained determination. Hang in there. Trust and believe that your hard work never goes unrewarded. You have to be willing to show up every single day and re-up every single day to fight the good fight. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not healed. All you have is the present. Also, the days of the week are now, yesterday, today, and tomorrow because of the pandemic, FYI, in case you didn't know that. Sustained determination is the way you are going to make inroads, advance ideas, hopes and dreams and aspirations. Sustained determination. Repeat, repeat, repeat. I'll say it again. Keep going. Hope will not be canceled. Hope will not be canceled. Please remain hopeful. That is the antidote to insecure and insecurity, being hopeful, just trusting and believing that there is a way. And if I rally others, we can find a way. But it can't be rhetoric. It has to be actionable. So we stand here in this moment where the whole world is feeling insecure for one reason or another. It could be the virus. It could be the violence. It could be vocation. But I know this to be true. If we decide to take action right now, we can win the day. And so Dr. Martin Luther King has this beautiful quote, and I want to share this with you all, the frame, what I want to do with all of you as a rally cry. We are now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with the fierce urgency of now. 
In this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. This is no time for apathy or complacency. This is a time for vigorous and positive action. I'll say it once again. This is a time for vigorous and positive action. Do your part. Show up. Fight the good fight. We need you. We all need you. And I have to tell you that as I stand before you, and this has been really difficult for me to share, and I've been fighting back my feeling with inside my stomach of, of sadness, because I've had to live with this for over 60 years, that I've been looked upon, and you might think, Kevin, you're such a kind and gentle man. But I have to tell you, I've learned very early from my grandfather that people would look at me differently. Imagine walking every single day in your neighborhood knowing that someone could see you as a menace. Doesn't matter that you're kind or you have titles or you have success. So I fight with insecurity and the feeling of being insecure every single day. You all are starting to have glimpses of the reality of this. Just pause and ponder that and take action, vigorous and positive action. So I say half a peace sign, the insecure, y'all know what I'm talking about, a half a peace sign, the insecure. Humanity for the win. Humanity for the win. I trust and believe in all of you. I know that you'll do right by us. Make your choice, the good wolf or the evil one. The choice is yours. Godspeed, be well. Okay, we have Megan Wirtz. Come on, Megan, come say hi. Hello. Um, Kevin, thank you so much for this. It's great to see you again. It's good to see you. Again. It's great to see you, <laughs> Megan. What's happened? <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, so my question is coming from my lack of experience. I am 22 years old. I just graduated from college, and I don't have experience in these like big life-changing events yet. I was raised in a very sheltered white community and going to college was the biggest like expansion that I've had um, and now that this is coming up and I'm trying to find my place as an ally for everything that's going on right now I'm having trouble digging through like the the news and the information the, um, coming from like the actual like television news broadcasts and what opinions are out there to the people in my lives that I'm trying to listen to who have a million different opinions on what is the right thing and what is the wrong information. Like, do you have any just like tips on how to like mentally clarify and like take the right stuff instead of the wrong stuff? So it's, you have to basically start redacting. So one of the things that I know is E.O. Wilson has this beautiful quote we are drowning in information while starving for wisdom. So I think as you start to think about what do I want to hear from, you can set up Google alerts and it will curate for you the kind of information that you want to actually receive so that you could have your own news feed of the things that you want to hear from, the voices that you want, and you can adjust it as needed, but you should start looking at the people that you follow online that you're impressed by or you're inspired by, right? And then say, oh, they focus on this area, equal justice. Oh, this person focuses on positivity. Oh, this person focuses on mindfulness. Let me go and just put those in because I'm following them for a reason. But that'll help you to start redacting all that noise right? And gaining more wisdom. So I think that's a big part. A lot of people are drowning in all the information, right? But they're starving for the wisdom, like you're saying. Megan, it's so good to see you. Congratulations, class of 2020. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, be well. Thank you, Thank you Megan. Um, uh, Karen Darwoon, let's go ahead and ask your question. Your video is off, Karen, so you can just verbally ask if you want. I, I switched it. Thanks for, um, thank you, Kevin, for being here today. And um, I've noticed in the chat, a whole bunch of people, including me, are wondering about your hat. So ah. you share about your hat, please. That's a great question. <laughs> and it's all strategic. So 
That symbol that you see is called the interrobang. It typically is connected, but this is a disjointed interrobang. And it was actually created for me from a dear friend who lives in New York City, Jeff Henderson. We worked together at Nike back in the day. He noticed that I used this symbol in my grammar, in my correspondence. It's an actual grammatical symbol. And he said, yo, dude, you're like the human in tarot bang. I'm like, what are you talking about? He says, your curiosity to question mark and your energy to bang, the exclamation mark. I'm going to make you some hats. And so he started making me hats. And so that's what this is. It's the interrobang. The question mark is about raising questions, being curious. Eyes of a child, eyes of wonder, eyes of possibility, right? Always seeking. And the exclamation mark is about bringing that heat, bringing that energy, right? Showing up, right? Being present. And so there you go. The interrobang. Hey, Kevin, two yes. questions. Is, that a sim is there a symbol? Somebody's asking if there's a symbol on a keyboard for that. Or no, you, you just do you just actually do some. Game. Yeah, you just have to. I do it separately. Yeah. But actually, when you look on emojis, they have it separate. Okay. Right? And together, flipped. They have it flipped okay. by exclamation and question. But um, typically, they're actually connected. If you actually do a search on Interrobang, you'll see they're always usually interconnected. Got it. And it also has um, a meaning when you're coding too. I think it means disrupt. Oh, uh, cool. And are those hats available for sale anywhere? No? Oh, merch. See, everybody always asking for the merch. I'll send you the link. I'll Keith, send you the link. I want that hat. Uh, Keith Carroll, hold on. Keith Carroll has the same last name as you. And check out what he's wearing for a hat. What's going on here? Because that's my son. Oh! <laughs> so, so he's supposed to bring the energy, energy. So yeah, so, so he liked to bring energy, energy. So I actually had him made some custom hats for him. He doesn't get to ask a question because he has access to me all the time. No, no, he does. This, he is get... a, this is a question for other people. The kids want to know. Um, so how can the kids that are 13 and 11 and the younger generation, how can they do something without having to go to the protest? Um, I'm, I'm a really, like, I want to try to let other kids know that you don't have to stand yes. out there and take yes. a picture for Instagram. Okay. Like, so that's it. Thank you, Dad. Yeah. So, no, that's great. And I think because it's so in their face, right, everything that's going on, and they feel like a need that they should be participating or supporting it. Kevin, you're, you got, you're, you're, you're frozen. You're being still. Is this your five minutes of stillness, Kevin? Is this your five minutes of quiet? Okay, we're all going to be still with Kevin. To address that, hey, when you oh, get older, is. do you, oh, sorry. So I was saying, you know, parents can actually um, have conversations with their kids. They're, they're maybe too young to go, or maybe the parents don't want to go, or maybe the kids don't feel comfortable going to a protest. Because people do bring their kids. But it's a matter of you don't have to go to the protest to feel a part of this because you can be just elevating the conversation. The discourse around this is really important. And for parents, having difficult conversations is challenging. And I'm a proud member of this book series called A Kid's Book About, which is conversation starters. So a kid's book about com, and it's really beautiful. And actually you can see behind me, my belonging book in large form there, but also up on that top shelf, there is a kid's book about racism, but they have other amazing topics, anxiety, depression, grief, um, empathy. So these are all conversation starters. Just have conversations and let your kids start to learn how to frame the language and their voice and their point of view about it. And as they get older, they can make a decision if they want to participate or not. But you can do a lot, you know, beyond just going to a rally or a march or a protest. There's lots of ways to be a part of it. And you can watch the political process. You can watch how voting is going on. You can start to understand the whole voting system so that when it comes time for you, oh, I'm in this. I'm going to be a part of that. Keith, thank you for that question. And nice to meet you. Um, I bet you're... I was proud, prouder than your, I'm so proud of your dad. I mean, we all are, he's, he's an amazing. So ladies and gentlemen, give a, give a round of applause for uh, Kevin Carroll. One more time, please.